How bright is the future of this asset job position? Should I still go for the asset? If you look at the lifespan of knowledge mm -hmm. in the human history, 200 years ago, if you want to become shoemaker, you become a shoemaker. Yes. And for the rest of your life, you're a shoemaker. You're not worried about if technology is going to start making shoes. Mm -hmm. So 200 years ago, the lifespan of knowledge was forever. And then 60 years ago, if you have a college degree, you were elite, you were top 10%. For the rest of your life, you don't have to learn anything. You can literally milk your college degree for the rest of your life. And five years ago, people started questioning, is college degree really worth it? I graduated from college. The things I've learned is outdated. Can I still use it? So even college, the lifespan of your college degree is shrinking. Why? Because the rapid changing, evolving technology. So what happens in, in our future with the artificial intelligence, more likely the lifespan of our knowledge is going to become shorter and shorter. It's going to be reality of life. So our new way of learning, new way of thriving in this technology is every month we have to learn something new, whether it's through work or experience. And every year we have to dedicate ourselves to learn some new skills and tools and something with generative AI, for example. So then every year learning something, go back to our work and work a certain time and come back and learn. That's going to be new way of life. Whether you're a cybersecurity engineer or accountant or a lawyer or asset, all the field is going to evolve. So it's important to understand it's going to become part of life to upskill, retrain yourself. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in particular, what's going to be future of asset? We start seeing more and more software-related problems like stock market. The other day, it was giving error. Some algorithm messed up. And really, they have to halt the entire stock market the other day. And you see United Airlines system is getting crashed. UPS system is getting crashed. And I see this. Why? Because many developers, they are heavily relied on artificial intelligence to write their code because, you know, some they're just copy-pasting things like that. The more you use artificial intelligence to build your software, the more risk involved. Where the artificial intelligence are learning write code from, from the internet... Where the artificial intelligence is telling your story, it learned from internet. It hallucinates. It mm. learns from the right data or wrong data. But if you think about internet in general, is there more misinformation or accurate information in the internet? I think more misinformation. Is on if internet. you believe internet is the safe, safest place in the world and you, everything in the internet is right and good, try to give unlimited free access for your six-year-old child to say, learn anything from internet for the rest of your life, you're good to go. What's going to happen to that kid? You're not confident putting yourself, your kids to the internet for unlimited freedom. Why? Because internet is full of misinformation and wrong data. And artificial intelligence, like large language model, is trained with internet data that's going to have lots of mistakes. When people, especially software development team, mm. when they can utilize generative AI on their software development, lots of risk involved because the large language model was trained on the internet data. So it's buggy already. That's one problem. It's a huge risk. More and more we're seeing in the industry, uh, lots of crazy things are happening. Systems are down. <laughs> at and is getting crashed. There's lots of things are going on. The second thing is this. Artificial intelligence, generative AI tools like GitHub Copilot or Tab9 is increasing our speed of production of software, new software functionalities. Let's say you are a really boutique, nice restaurant, you're new. And when you have 10 customers, your customers are really happy with the quality of food and everyone hears it in your neighborhood. On Sunday morning, you see like 300 people showing up in your restaurant, what's gonna happen? You have to cook faster and cook more. What's gonna happen? Most likely, quality. the quality will go down and the customer will complain. That's happening in the software industry. They have to pump out way more functionality than before because of generative AI. That means that these more functionality developed in the last period of time mm. with the wrong data trained with the codes full of bugs. That's how you train large language models. You're using that right code. It's also risky. That means that you need more software testing because you can write as much code as you want, but it takes one mistake to bring your company down. So the risk of software is increasing. So you need more software testers. Now, software testers in particular, when you have lots of things to test, you have to automate a lot. That means that I believe software development engineers will be very, very high demand in the next few years. Now, used to be, I would say, the ratio of software developers and testers was seven to three. Seven software developers, 
and three software testers with particular test automation engineers. With the new setup, with the new AI-based software development, I would say it's going to be at least 50-50. You're going to need more testers, which mm -hmm. is like five to five right now, or one-on-one. -on -one. So one developer, one testers, okay? You're going to need one developer, one testers. And then I would say at some point, if it could go become reverse as well. You might need more testers and developers. Less developer, yeah. Yeah. 